is that uh, here we don't have a system where if you make something poor, you get fired, or like if you if you do something bad, you like, you you suck. You know, That's in, a great in, point. In the, in the in the cutthroat way that it is in, in the, the United States, States you know yeah, I mean? it's, it's survival of the fittest. Whereas here, it's different because in Canada, it's in the states is if you waste money, you get fired because it's not if you make something bad. Because I mean, the, the guy there's that famous story about the guy who was the executive producer on Lost, the pilot of Lost. Have you heard that story? The guy who greenlit the pilot of Lost got fired only because it cost so much money. It was a great show. He's the guy who says previously on Lost. That's his voice. He was fired because that show cost so much money. In Canada, it doesn't matter if your shit loses money because the government takes the loss. I mean, I can't think of a Canadian movie that's been profitable. Did Splice make any money? Uh, it, it looks like it's going to make money, but... That movie's so bad. Really? Oh my god, did you see it? Yeah, I didn't think it was that bad. Oh, it, I was laughing! When the, when the fucking bug came down and picked up the brother, or whatever. Oh my god! Well, that's, that's, that's part of the thing, too. I mean, should we be ambitious enough to... I mean, the most you can get from the public funding system, if you break it down, I think is like... You A know, million dollars? Four, no, like four. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you tap every single resource. So... To make like a big budget feature film, you have to look at like international co-production, right? And then people will start having arguments about like, well, you know, is it now. yeah, and is it Canadian again anymore? Should we be entering that market, or should we accept the limits of you know our own situation and just make like instead of you know a, a Passchendaele, make eighteen hundred thousand like dollar films and give young filmmakers a chance? Like, well, to, I, I'm definitely cut, for cut themselves. I mean, it, it depends what the Canadian film industry wants to do. Because right now it seems like it's in a, like a real no man's land where like movies like Passchendaele or what was that awful one where the guy pretends to be a cowboy with no gun. Gunless, any Paul Gross movie. It's like they're all trying to be these pseudo-American movies. That Bond Cop, Bad Cop, oh, I mean, even though that was a fine film. They're all aping American filmmaking and the American filmmaking standard or whatever that was. And the big difference is that America had this, this really fruitful student film movement that came out of the 60s and 70s that is fueling that now. Like, they had a huge, huge, huge... Well, I mean, they had a great time when there were no great American movies, and, like, really great American movies, and it was just students that were working, getting money, and doing all that stuff on their own. Canada's never had that. And so because we haven't had that, it's like we're trying to skip this step where we don't... We're trying to put all these inexperienced or just idiots. We're trying to have idiots make these American-style movies. Whereas I'm totally for the notion where you just take all that money that you would be giving in $4 million payouts to, like, you know, Paul Gross and... Who, who else gets money in this country? Daniel McIver. Just idiots. Just people whose, whose movies you'd never be excited to go see. If instead that got cut into, you know, 20 or 40 different like 10,000, anyway, even $50,000 budgets for young people who just had nothing but blind ambition, then at least you'd be, you know, turning the soil over and starting to get people, well, get, start getting people experience. Because you only get good at making movies by doing it over and over again. That's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, it's hard to expect, like you said, someone, you know, you get to the point and you're 35 and then finally... Maybe you, you mastered first the, movie. the public funding system or the way to like, because the reality is you have to be good at paperwork and, mm -hmm. you know, selling your which stuff. Not, which is another thing I think is a huge problem. The hoops, uh, like the paperwork, paperwork hoops that they make you jump through are like a person who is very good at that is a terrible filmmaker. Like you can't, somebody who is an incredible paperwork filler outer and, you know, an excellent like financial producer, those are like the exact opposite qualities of the person you want making great movies. You want a spontaneous idiot. You know what, I shouldn't say idiot. You, you want like a spontaneous maniac making movies. The last person in the world that you would think would be good at filling out these forms. So it's like it's rigged for you to lose. Or it's rigged for certain types of people to lose. It's rigged for cool people to lose. It's, it's great if you're a loser. If you are a total loser and you're like, oh my god, I want to be a filmmaker so bad. And you go to film school and you suck up to all your teachers and you become friends with 40 year olds and go to dinner parties with them at TIFF then yeah, you'll be able to make movies and you will be a joke to every young person and you'll never know because you only hang out with people 20 years older than you. But if you're actually a young guy who's like, yeah, I could make a wicked movie, it will never happen for you. Unless you become friends with one of these losers and who's got the time? 